Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our day number four. The problems are already on the blackboard. I'm going to read them to you. To re read them to you very quickly. If a equals three, b equals two, c equals one. X equals 5, Y equals 3, and Z equals 0. Find the values of the following expressions. Here are the expressions 7C squared, 9B squared, 8BC times Z, 7Y squared Z, 8X over 10, 9XZ, 7AC, 4X squared, B times C times X times Z, whole squared, X times Z over A plus B, and that's it. Pause the video. Solve the problem yourself. When you have done solve, when you are done solving all ten of them, you can resume the video. All right. Number one. Number one. Seven c squared. Seven c squared. Oh, that's pretty simple. Straight, straightforward. Uh, c is one. One squared is one. So it's just 7, because 7 times 1 is 7. Number 2, 9 times b squared, b squared is 2, 9 times 4, which gives us 36. 9 times 4 is 36. 8 times b, which is 2, times c, which is 1, times, oh, z is 0. z is 0, and 0 times any number is 0. So this is just a big fat 0, because 0, times any number zero times any number equals zero now the question is do you know how to write this thing in the language of the algebra because that's all we are here to learn how do I write this sentence which is in English language 0 times any number, 0 times any number equals 0. Now it is truly, in, true in the truest sense, a, a, a sentence in English language. How do I write, how do I translate a sentence from the English language to algebraic language? That's what we are here to learn, algebraic expressions. How do I express in an algebraic manner? 0 times any number. How do you express the idea of any number in algebra? Any number could be any number. And typically when it's just any old number, we use the letter n. n for any number. n stands for any number. 0 times any number equals 0. Voila! Voila! This equation here, this equation here is a sentence as I explained to you the first day I believe it was. The equivalent concept of a sentence in algebra is an equation. Equivalent concept, equivalent concept of a word, just like in language you have a word or words, words make up sentences. Sentences are made up of words. Equations are made up of terms. This one has three terms. One, two, three. This equation also has three terms. A plus B equals seven. There are three terms here. A over B equals 3. There are two terms here. Not because A and B, this is actually counted as one term. Not because of that, because there's this one here and this term happens to be a constant. What about this? Just A over B. A simple A over B is not, a, it's no longer, it's a, well actually this, this, this was the equation before with two terms in it. If I take out the equation sign, it is no longer an equation obviously. It is called an expression. A plus B, A plus B what? I stopped. I didn't say anything. A plus B, that's all. Well, it's an expression. It's not a sentence. I didn't, I didn't finish my sentence. It was just an expression. Anyway, enough of that. Oh, I don't know why I raised the bottom part. I spent, I invested all the time in writing it so nicely at the bottom with the box around it. And at the end, I ended up erasing it. Bloody hell. Number four. Number four was A squared. How much is A? A is three. So 3 squared is just 9. Number 5. 5 times b times y times z. As soon as I see a big complicated expression, 
I just want to make sure that there are no zeros in it before I do all the work. What is zero here? Z is zero. Is, does Z appear here? Oh, there you go. So it doesn't matter what all of this is. All of this is just mumbo jumbo mumbo jumbo. That's what that is. That's how I read it. Mumbo jumbo mumbo jumbo times zero. Well, mumbo jumbo mumbo jumbo times zero is zero. Any number times zero is zero. So it doesn't matter what this quantity is. We're not going to waste our time trying to figure out, trying to evaluate what this is. Five times two times three. Who cares what it is? Because at the end we're going to do it times zero. Anything times zero is zero. Number six. B squared. B is two. So two squared is four. Seven. Three times B. B is two. Three times two, which is six. Eight. I don't want to keep doing it by the bottom there. It's getting to be too low. Number eight. Number 8, 2 times x times a, 2 times x which is 5, times a which is 3, or 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30. Number 9, the penultimate one, 6 times c squared minus z. Oh, there you go, there is the z again. Anything, that, any, anything, anything, this is the anything part, anything times 0 is just 0. Number 10, before I go to number 10, allow me to digress for a second. And for those of you who still do not know what digress means, I have used it many times. This is the word that I use very often. And it is a word that I use very often because that is what I do. I digress a lot. But whenever I do digress, I always tell you that I'm digressing. And I always still also tell you that I'm done with my digression. Digress, digress was day number three. Just type in Keshwani prep dash vocab like this. Keshwani prep. Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day three. I don't know why I always put parentheses and I have to end up erasing it. Day 3, just type in this tag and you will learn the word digress. So allow me to di digress means to go off a topic. Allow me to digress for a second. I referred to number 9 a second ago as the penultimate one. And we learned this word yesterday also, I believe it was, penultimate, which simply means, it's a very fancy way of saying, second to the last. If something is second to the last, it is referred to as the penultimate. Make sure that you pronounce it properly. It is not to be pronounced pen ultimate, which I have seen sometimes some people do that. It is not pen ultimate, it's penultimate. Penultimate means second to the last. When did we learn it? What, what day number? Day number 11. So when I, oh I know why I keep putting parentheses because I have a habit of putting parentheses when, next to the day. But I don't have any parentheses in the tag. Again, if you want to learn the word penult penultimate, just type in Kashmani prep dash vocab dash day 11 without the parentheses. Use that tag and you'll learn it. Number time, number 10. The last one. X times Y over A plus B. Let's see what that boils down to. X times Y. X is 5 times Y, which is 3, over A plus B. A plus B. A plus B is 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2. Well, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 5 appears on the top. If I were to divide the top and the bottom by 5, this 5 cancels out with that 5. Yes, you can do that. Even though there is a plus sign and this is by itself, it doesn't matter. It is, after all, a 5. So if a 5 appears on the bottom, 5 appears on the top, we can cancel it out by... What's the logic behind it? If somebody asks you what is going on here, you tell them that you're dividing the numerator and denominator by 5. If you have a fraction, as long as you divide the numerator and denominator by the same number, it doesn't change the value of the fraction. The fraction still remains the same. See, for example, if I have 10 over 2, well, that wasn't a good example. How about 100 over 20? 100 over 20, 100 over 20 we know is 5. So if I were to take the 100 and divide that by 10, so I just divided the top by 10, 
And if I take 20 and divide that by 10, I will not change anything. And bottom now is 20 over 10, which is 2. Top is 100 over 10, which is 10. And 2, which of course is 5, which is what we have here. So as long as you divide the top and the bottom by the same number, or if you multiply the top and the bottom by the same number, it doesn't change the value of the fractions. Notice how I speak, I refer to them as top and the bottom because I'm, I'm, I'm putting in a lot of effort to make, it, make, it, make, sure, to make sure that I do not come across as a nerd, although it may be far too late for that. Uh, that's why I didn't refer to them as numerator and denominator, top and the bottom. Anyway, so this is 5 at the bottom, this is 5 on the top, they cancel out and the answer is 3. Well, that's it. I will see you tomorrow on day number 5. Let me quickly check my lesson plan to see what we what we get what we're getting into in day number five. Ah, they're getting more and more complicated. The expressions are getting far too complicated by the by the time you get to higher higher days. But that's the idea to learn how to evaluate algebraic expressions. I'll see you tomorrow on day number five. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me. You can send me an email through any of these website addresses that you see there or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Alright? Thanks.